Welcome back to Bazaar Morning Call. You're joining us live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal studio here in Mumbai. Thanks for uh, staying with CNBC TV 18. As we get into the opening of trade, we just have a couple of minutes to go. And uh, the market cues are indicating that the start may be mildly in the red. Rajesh Palvia, the Vice President, Technical and Derivative Research at Access Securities is joining in this morning. Rajesh, good morning. Our technical experts believe that there's perhaps a breakout coming on the upside. Uh, are you looking at that as well? And what are the markers? What are the individual stocks to look at today? Good morning, Sonia. Yeah, definitely. So we have seen a strong recovery from 17,800 level, level and now almost we are trading near to 18,250, 300 zone. Uh, but looking at the setup for this weekly expiry, uh, a lot of call writing activity has been witnessed at 18,200, 18,300 strikes. So still call writers are not unwinding their position and uh, looking at the data setup. We believe that, you know, till expiry market uh, is likely to consolidate in a tight range. 18,100 uh, could be the possible support area on the downside and on the higher side, 18,250 uh, to 18,300 are the supply zone. So we believe that, you know, some consolidation we can see for next one or two trading session and then possibly, yes, uh, we can uh, have a breakout on the higher side. Looking at the uh, setup for Bank Nifty also, uh, we are almost near to its uh, important critical resistance area of 43,500. Uh, once we able to cross those level, then uh, one, round, one round of short covering action can be there in Bank Nifty also. And possibly we can add further higher towards 44,000 level. So both the indices are showing, yes, strength. And uh, uh, sooner or later, we are going to have a breakout on the higher side. So our strategy for Nifty uh, to play for this expiry is, uh, if at all, if we get any dip near 18,150 level is a buying opportunity. So we are recommending here to buy a call option of 18,150 strike at around 105. Uh, pre uh, previous close was at around 137, but we are recommending to buy in the dips near to 105 level, keep stop loss of 80 rupees. And on the upside, again, we are expecting that uh, this call option should move higher towards 150, 160 zone where one can book profits. On the stock specific, we believe that, you know, PFC can continue further more momentum. Uh, stock has managed to give a breakout of almost its uh, uh, one year, you know, uh, consolidation zone. And uh, the breakout is clearly suggesting that, you know, uh, stock can move further higher towards 168, 170 zone. So PFC is buy with stop loss of 153. Another stock which we like that is from insurance space, that is uh, HDFC Life. Stock managed to give a breakout of large four-week uh, down move. And uh, looking at the short covering action, we believe that, you know, HDFC Life can continue further more uh, higher momentum towards 620, 630 zone. One can buy HDFC Life with stop loss of 585. Okay. Rajesh, thank you very much for all those trading strategies. Have a great trading day out there. Okay. The, the markets have opened uh, kind of red on the nifty but uh, not so much on the Sensex. The uh, stocks, of course, that are blazing green are innocent, up 2%. Uh, <coughs> that's to be expected. But otherwise, it's a motley group of stocks. There's m, &M Wipro, Tata Consumer, Sipla. So you can't make much of a pattern. Consumption seems to be doing well at this point in time. And barring innocent bank, the other banks are still sulking. So let's see. It's not throwing up a trend. So let's look at what Momentum is telling us. Uh, Mangalam is joining us on our Momentumizer special. And he's looking at BF Investments. Are you, Mangalam? Yes, uh, Lata. You know, it's not a stock that we st uh, talk about uh, very often. But uh, yesterday, it hit an upper circuit of uh, close to around 20%. The previous trading session, it hit an upper circuit of 20% as well. So as a result of which, says the last two trading sessions, the stock is up 44%. Try to figure out what exactly is causing this up move. Uh, you look at the exchange notifications of the company. They have a board meeting scheduled today to consider voluntary delisting of shares. So that is what is uh, causing these shares to move higher. And pre-open as well, it is up 10%, logged in the 10% upper circuit as the circuit filter has been revised. Usually BF Investments and BF Utilities moves around the Nandi corridor uh, uh, news, but this time around it is about voluntary delisting. 74% is the stake that the promoters own in BF Investments. So we uh, need to see uh, how many people tender in, in of the non-promoters and importantly what the outcome of the board meeting is. The volumes have been extremely high. Yesterday's turnover on the stock was 17.2 crore versus a three-month average of just about 80 lakh. And delivery quantity yesterday as well was 1.94 lakh as against 11,500. This uh, over and above the fact that the exchange has also asked them 
for clarification on the stock price move and the volume spurt. Uh, the company's reply to that is awaited. And uh, the insider trading in uh, the company currently is prohibited up until the third quarter results. So that is another factor to keep in mind. Okay, all right. Manglam will keep an eye out on that one. Was up 20% and as you said in pre-open as well, up another 10% on. Moving on then, channel checks and conversations with various apparel, consumer durables, paints and QSR companies, they suggest a sharp drop in discretionary demand in the past few weeks. To understand uh, whether or not that's happening and get an analyst take, we have Naveen Thwedi, Institutional Research at uh, HDFC Securities, who joins us. Hi, Naveen. Good morning. Uh, well, uh, do you believe that's the case? There's a slowdown in consumer discretionary. Uh, what are your channel checks uh, suggesting? Yeah, hi. Good morning, everyone. Um, I would say uh, different buckets behaving uh, differently uh, during this phase. Uh, certainly, uh, some part of the QSR where uh, we have seen last couple of quarters uh, uh, some sort of a, a pent up, uh, which driven by mobility has uh, driven the SSG and the, the entire uh, uh, ADS for QSR side. Uh, it seems to be on a, on a slightly on a weaker note uh, uh, this quarter. Uh, consumer durable side, uh, we have seen last two years, uh, they have done a remarkable sort of a performance uh, in terms of the growth in the stock side. Uh, durables, last six months, we have seen commodity-led uh, destocking impacting the uh, quarter two, as well as we have seen uh, some, so, some sort of a slowdown uh, post-July uh, also, uh, August also. So uh, thereby, uh, some taper down there also. Uh, it seems that... Uh, uh, the B rating uh, impact, uh, which impacted the quarter two numbers, uh, some sort of a recovery is expected in the Q3 also. So December month, our channel check suggesting that uh, there has been a good amount of uh, uh, channel uh, stocking has happened in the December month for fans. Sure. Okay. Actually, Naveen, we are a little surprised when some reports, research reports told us that consumer discretionary demand is weak. Uh, it's not making sense. I mean, you, you, uh, Sonia just spoke about the airline demand that's going through the roof literally yeah. uh, and figuratively. Uh, so this uh, consumer discretionary, is it what the pent-up demand has weathered away? First of all, do you agree that uh, consumer discretionary, upper level consumption is going down? Uh, Lata, I would say uh, multiple things are happening around. We need to understand uh, which uh, part of the consumption is behaving uh, differently. Uh, last two months, if you look at traveling, hotels, uh, uh, marriages driven consumption, we have seen a significant amount of uh, uh, pickup there. Uh, and typically you will find post festive season, a lot of categories, is uh, they started showing a month on month decline. Uh, because uh, prior to the festive season time, uh, you do a lot of uh, uh, either panty loading or, or maybe channel stuffing sort of a thing and thereby post festive season time uh, you will see more uh, a sluggish sluggishness uh, in the discretionary side uh, mm -hmm. although uh, some part like you mentioned about uh, there has been some uh, uh, sequentially decline in the in the cons consumer side which i mentioned about uh, maybe the qsr side you will find more, uh, slightly deceleration uh, mm -hmm. Durable side, uh, because quarter two was a, a, a washout quarter because uh, the, they've seen a messy amount of destocking uh, across uh, categories. Driven by I think there's some issue with your audio, Naveen. Uh, okay, let me try again. Uh, in your report, you in your FMCG report, you mentioned that you're selectively positive on some stocks like Darbar and Marico. What are these companies doing differently? Is it just valuation upside that you see here? So now I hope I'm audible to you. Yes, yes, yeah. go ahead. You are audible now. Yeah. So in the FMCG side, yeah, so in the FMCG side, certainly uh, you will find uh, Dabur Marico where the stock also has corrected uh, from uh, from the uh, peak level. Uh, the, the trigger there was that uh, gradually you will find uh, the rural is also uh, picking up versus what we have seen in the last uh, five, six quarter, where the industry level, there was a, a massive amount of decline uh, driven by base impact as well as the uh, rural itself was at a consumption level was tapering down. Uh, the expectation there is that uh, uh, sequentially there should be an improvement uh, along with the the margin side where we have seen last two, three quarters, most of the FMCG names have struggled in terms of the margin side also. 
So sequentially, both uh, revenue as well as the margin side, we expect improvement over the next two, three quarters. And in stocks where we still have comfort on the valuation side, we're still recommending uh, uh, in, in the FMC side. Mm -hmm. Well, Marico and Dabur would have a reasonable uh, rural exposure. Has that picked up because they were all worrying that rural demand was weak? Uh, Lata, uh, suddenly rural side uh, pickup uh, is not too much meaningful so far. Mm. However, you, you oh. need to understand that uh, uh, the calls are typically more from the six to one year, uh, six months to one year sort of a time frame. Our take here is that maybe Q4 and the Q1 is a time when uh, the rural will uh, will real uh, see a, a decent amount of pickup in in terms of the growth. Okay. Uh, I just had one more question on consumer durables. Uh, you write in your note that there are some companies that could outperform on a three-year revenue CAGR basis. That's Havels and Vigard. And the outlier in Q2 was Havels. So, so if someone is perhaps not invested yet in these names, does it still make sense uh, to invest in names like Havels and Vigard? So, so last year, most durable names disappointed. Okay. Our take here is that at least some uh, names in the consumer durable side, uh, they will uh, do well uh, this year. Considering uh, B2B, B2G side, also we are seeing some pickup. We are also seeing pickup uh, in the uh, in the in the B2C side where D is talking impacted the primary level numbers. Uh, so thereby, uh, the the last six to nine months correction offers some entry points. Uh, so we remain positive on uh, Havels, Crompton uh, in the electrical mm -hmm. side. And finally, very quickly, any paint companies? Uh, I don't cover paint, so I won't be able All to comment. Right. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, Naveen, for enlightening us about uh, some trends in consumer stocks mm -hmm. and your favorites. Okay, with that, uh, let's get to, uh, Sudarshan, to uh, Sudarshan and Mitesh for the 910 call. Sudarshan, watch, watch your best trade. Well, uh, by the Nifty and the Bank Nifty, I've given the stops earlier. Petronet LNG is a buy with a stop under 214. Oh. Okay, and Mitesh, what about you? What would be the big call at 910? Uh, I'll go with a buy on uh, ICICI GI. Uh, keep a stop below 1215, uh, target of around 1300 to begin with. All right, thanks a lot for that, gentlemen. Uh, well, uh, it's that time of the day when we get you the special standard brokerage report. Nimesh is joining us to run us through what's top of mind today. Nimesh, what do you have for us? Hi, Nigel. So today's standout is on All Cargo Logistics. An interesting report from Jeffrey is they've initiated coverage on the stock with a buy rating and a target price of 500, a potential 23% upside from current levels. Now, uh, Jeffries believes that All Cargo is a good play on a global trade, which is 87% of the revenues come from that side of the businesses, and uh, a leader in less than container load, which is called LCL. Uh, again, uh, for, uh, so uh, for, uh, for FY23 and FY23, FY24, they see some normalization in gains which were made in FY21 and FY22, but the franchise is available at a good valuations of only 13 times FY23 FY price to earning. Now, uh, they see uh, further re rating of the stock on the back of uh, uh, PTL turnaround and demerger of the two businesses, which is uh, CSF, uh, CFS, and uh, logistics, uh, logistics Parks. Both will be demerged, and that will be a big, a big re rating trigger for all cargo going forward. In terms of numbers, they're, they're expecting over the next two to three years a 14% EPS CAGR and 18% ROE and largely driven by demerger. So demerger will be a big trigger for the stock and hence an initial in coverage with a target price of 500 rupees on all cargo logistics. Okay. okay, thanks for that. By the way, Angel One is moving up with quite a bit of uh, you know gusto this morning post the business update. But Indusind Bank is another stock on our radar. Abhishek is here to tell us more about that very strong loan growth, Abhishek. Uh, well, yes, Sonia, the business update of Indusind Bank does show that on a YOI basis, the 19% loan growth is perhaps at a 12-quarter high. So, running through the other numbers is that deposits is up 14.3% YOI and about 3% sequentially. The CASA ratio has dipped a bit, 7-quarter uh, low at 42%. Uh, calculation shows that, you know, CASA... Uh, in absolute value has grown lower than the overall deposit growth. So retail deposits has picked up. It's grown more than 6% on a sequential basis. The loan growth has come in at 19% YOI and about 4.55% sequentially. So the 19% level is perhaps at a 12-quarter high. Credit deposit ratio of the bank has also improved both YOI and quarter on quarter. So brokerages are upbeat on the stock. CLSA has upgraded it to buy from outperformed rating and raised the target price to 1,500. Jeffries also has a buy rating with a target price of 1,600, while Morgan Stanley also remains bullish on the stock. Back to you. 
Thank you. Thank you for that, Abhishek. 18, 19% advance shouldn't surprise us. The industry, banking industry is growing at 17.5%. Uh, so, uh, indice in growing faster. The one of the big gainers at the point at this point in time, pre-opening 1.4 percent higher. Sipla, Ekta, why are you interested in that stock? Well, Antique has written on it. They have a sell with a target price of 948. According to them, the upcoming <coughs> launch of Adver Generic, which is basically an inhaler, is probably not going to be as as uh, lucrative as it was earlier anticipated. That is because the market value is continuing to fall at a faster pace. For example, GSK, which is the innovator of Adver Generic, has been successfully shifting patients from Adver to another set of drugs that they have, which is basically Brio as well as Strelogy. Now, the Adver Generic volume, in fact, has declined 6% CAGR post the entry of generics in CY19. At the same time, the new drugs by GSK have seen a volume growth of 50% CAGR, albeit at a lower base. Also, Ellipta is a once-a-day medication with lower dosage versus Adver, which is a two-times-day uh, drug. Remember, it's an inhaler. Now, a Brexon generic is the other concern for them, which is a cancer drug. Sipla has side transferred the product to a third party uh, contract manufacturer since Goa, their facility from where it's filed, has a warning letter. The company expects the launch of the product in the second half of FY24, which would be a delay of over nine months. So these are a couple of concerns brought up. All right, Got thanks, uh, Hekta, for that. I uh, understood the delay in launch and I understood <laughs> the, the warning letter. But otherwise, the words that Ekta is able to memorize is like the Sanskrit slokams my mother made me memorize. <laughs> Intimidating. In That's what it's called, right? But just 20 seconds left for the markets to open. Innocent Bank is going to be your top gainer this morning. Post that strong loan growth of 19%. So do keep an eye out on that. And a couple of other stocks, Angel One, Airline Stocks, DMART will all be reacting uh, to business updates as well as strong momentum seen. Uh, in terms of growth for the quarter. Just four seconds to go. Looks like the headline index is going to open absolutely quiet. So flat moves coming in on the headline index this morning. Uh, the Nifty just holding on to that 18,230 mark, which is not bad. Considering we had weak global queues, the Nifty is absolutely quiet with a bit of a green hue on it this morning. The big mover, Indusind Bank, expectedly up one and a half odd percent. Sun Pharma, Grassim, Britannia, m and are a couple of other stocks that are looking good. Axis Bank hit a fresh lifetime high yesterday, so just keep an eye out on that. There were fresh long positions added there as well. Uh, and Asian Paints, uh, HDFC, Life Life Insurance companies have done quite well and there is an expectation of uh, a 16 to 18% compounded growth in their business. So there's uh, HDFC Life that continues to move higher and SBI Life as well. The last time I checked was in the green. On the downside, you have metal stocks that are under a bit of pressure, Hindalco, JSW Steel. TCS ahead of its numbers on Monday is a bit jittery. You have Tata Motors, Maruti Suzuki, so a lot of auto stocks are under pressure. Hero Motor Corp as well. Two wheelers have not seen any recovery. Uh, Hero is down three tenths of a percent. Then you have Dr. Reddy's, uh, there's Wipro, there's HCL Tech, Bajaj Finsurf, Coal India that are all trending in the red. But otherwise, it's a very quiet market, you'd have to say. The big mover, of course, from the frontliners is Indusind Bank. And I'm also watching out for a lot of the aviation stocks in the broader markets as well as, um, you know, some of the stocks like Angel One. But do keep an eye out on um, the advanced decline ratio. It's trending well in favor of the advances now, over 1,500 stocks there. Well, uh, let's take a look at a couple of these uh, companies that are reacting to the operational update. Avenue Supermarts, the, you know, the numbers look quite good, so that one should come up for you on the screen. Uh, two of the banking names, the smaller ones, that is. For the time being, Avenue Supermarts is down 1.5%. Remember, valuation buys are around 75 times odd. is never cheap, never gives you that kind of comfort. But the stock has corrected considerably from the recent peak. Two smaller banks have come out with their updates. Both of them have opened up in the green. Uh, Punjab and Sindh Bank, as well as Equitas, SFB, both of them are up. In fact, uh, Equitas is up close to around 5% as we speak. Angel One is up close to around 3% percent Vedanta, yesterday it saw a bit of a surge in the last hour of trade. In the last 30 minutes or so, I think the stock ended at the high point of the day. Today, it's pulled back a little bit. The operational update is normally not a big queue, but metals on the whole are down, so that's why that stock is down. Aegis Logistics, Nimbish just told us about that special brokerage report that's come in from Jefferies. So let's see how that one is uh, reacting. They're fairly positive on the stock as well. Aegis uh, uh, Logistics uh, should come up for you on the screen. Railtel, they have won an order of close to around 200 crores, 185 crores to be precise. So that's opened up in the green. LTI Mindtree, post the merger, the first big exit is what uh, you know uh, they have reported. And that stock has opened up at the cut of around 2%. Some part of the street would have expected that. And finally, Relly Gear as well. 
there's a newspaper report that's suggesting that maybe they'll do a QIP. In the final hour of trade yesterday, the stock had spiked up by close to around 5%. This morning, it's opened up mildly in the green, I think, with a gain of close to around 2% odd. So, really, QIP is what they're talking about. That's what reports suggest. Let's see whether or not that does happen. It should come okay. up here on the screen at some point in time. Actually, the bonhomie in banks is spreading over to a whole host of banks. You know, the PSU banks, UCO and uh, such like Bank of India have all been anyway outperformers in uh, 2022. That's continuing. So, it's not just Punjab Sin Bank, which is up 3%. But it's dragging along with it a Bank of Maharashtra, you know, a Yuko Bank, IDBI, all of them up over a percent, one to two percent, uh, shining in that glory because it's really uh, the entire sector doing well. Equitas actually, the uh, permission from RBI has come for SBI to SBI mutual fund to hold ten yeah. percent stake. Previously, they gave to other uh, funds as well because of the merger, and uh, that is a bit of a relief uh, that Equitas is seeing. But generally. Banks uh, are ruling the roost, and you can see that in the Nifty Bank. Despite uh, red on other counters, Nifty Bank is holding on to green. Absolutely. Innocent Bank, look at that. 2.5% higher <coughs> now. In fact, Harsha Upadhyay, the Chief Investment Officer, Equity at Kotak Mutual Fund, is joining us. Harsha, good morning. Uh, Happy New Year to you. I'm sure you'd like to weigh in on this conversation we're having about the banking sector and the kind of uh, you know profitability, loan growth, asset quality improvement we've seen. Do you think a lot of it is priced into the stocks? I mean, names like Access Bank are at lifetime highs. Or do you think it's a structural up move and there's lots more to go on the upside? Uh, good morning, Sonia. Happy New Year to all of you. Uh, yes, uh, banking has been one of the sectors where we have uh, maintained a very large exposure for quite a few quarters now. And uh, our thesis is uh, coming right in terms of uh, no asset quality issues, in fact. Uh, Asset quality issues have, uh, uh, the concerns have uh, completely subsided. Uh, we have seen very strong credit growth. Uh, this has continued for almost three quarters, uh, very strong month on month growth and year on year growth. Uh, so, overall, I think uh, this space is looking good. And uh, structurally, we believe that uh, the credit growth improvement that we have seen should continue for uh, quite some time uh, from here on as well. The only thing that one needs to be uh, uh, worried about is. Uh, whether the margins will hold up or not, because now the credit growth is uh, exceeding deposit growth. So to that extent, there will be pressure on uh, net interest margins. That's what we need to see. But overall, I think the sector uh, continues to be uh, one of the beneficiaries of revival in the domestic growth. Mm. Oh, yes, margins. Uh, even the interbank liquidity is going down. Reserve Bank is squeezing it out. So even in the interbank market, people are borrowing money rather than lending to RBI. Clearly, cost of money will move up. Uh, Harsha, I, I want to come back to the banking sector in a bit. We over-discuss it usually. So let me go to the other one. Will you be a contrarian buyer in IT now? There is an anticipation that probably by end of 23, the uh, Fed may start cutting and that would usually be positive techs. But for a whole host of reasons, contrarian buys in IT? Uh, not yet, Sonia. Uh, not yet, uh, Lata, sorry. Uh, we don't think uh, the pain is over yet, but at the same time, we are unlikely to sell uh, further from these levels. We already have an underweight position in many of our schemes and maybe close to neutral in a few of our funds. Uh, we will continue to hold down to those positions and look for anything positive on the IT budget. But as we see right now, the IT budget for 2023 is going to be uh, more muted as compared to what it was for uh, 2022. Uh, so, to that extent, uh, we would uh, still remain a bit cautious on the IT sector. Uh, but uh, it may not be such a big underperformer as it was in the year 2022. All right. Uh, hi, Asha. Morning. Uh, it may not be such a big underperformer. That's pretty good news from an index perspective, at least, because that one was dragging in the past year. Commodities, they have made a big comeback. The debate is on whether you, know, you put money in China or, or India. But from the India perspective, if China is going to reopen, then commodities could do well. Or have they already played that out? What's your sense on that space? Uh, Nigel, we have been very selective on the commodity space uh, because this is a very difficult sector to get uh, all your uh, thesis right. Uh, yes, uh, some of these companies have cleaned up their balance sheets. Uh, they have deleveraged quite a bit. And we have also seen the impact, positive impact of uh, rupee depreciation in terms of uh, profitability of this sector. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we still do not have uh, uh, enough uh, 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 convincing answer in terms of where the global growth is headed and how strong it's going to be. 
uh, uh, and and uh, that's the reason why we do not want to take a overweight position on the metals or the commodities as yet. But yes, we do have uh, some selective positions based on how balance sheets have improved and how they've been able to manage the whole cycle until now. Okay. Since we're talking about China, the reopening, etc., do you reckon that uh, the reopening in China could perhaps dull demand for India as an investment standpoint? Do you see more money perhaps globally move into China and out of India? Uh, Judy is still out on that, uh, Sonia. Uh, but our guess is from a medium term, from a structural point of view, India is going to benefit from what has happened in the world geopolitically and also <clears throat> the issues that uh, most of the economies are facing. And while there could be some of, uh, uh, renewed interest in terms of money moving into China in case of a opening of the economy, but clearly I think uh, China or even if you look at Taiwan, for example, uh, they are more dependent on global growth than India is. So to that extent, I think uh, their overall growth and their market performance would be uh, a lot more uh, challenged even in the year 2023 as compared to uh, India's performance uh, because of their dependence on the global growth. Uh, so, from that perspective, and also the fact that uh, many of the global majors are actually looking to diversify out of China uh, mm -hmm. and, and rely on uh, various other regions, including India, I think India will structurally benefit over a period of time. But what happens immediately is anybody's guess. Okay. Now that you've discussed the other sectors, let me come back to banking. Uh, will you come down the line? We have seen a lot of uh, brokerage reports uh, recommending originally only state bank and then you started including Bank of Baroda and then Punjab National Bank. I think I saw a report even on BOI. Mm. So, you know, the line seems to be, are you with that? Would you go down the uh, line in PSU banks? And you take on old private sector banks. Uh, you know, they're actually the best performers. If you look at Karnataka Bank or South Indian Bank, it's like three-digit uh, increase, 100%, 140% over the year. So, both those questions. Uh, um, uh, Lata, clearly uh, the pressure is on the uh, low cost of uh, funds uh, as of now, as we discussed earlier as well. So uh, from that perspective, we believe the larger banks, whether uh, private sector or the public sector, will be uh, the banks which will be able to hold on to their deposit growth or will be able to uh, sustain the trends uh, that we have seen in the past. Uh, so to that extent, uh, we think that the NIM pressure would be more on NBFCs and the smaller banks, whether private or uh, public sector. So uh, from that perspective, uh, most of our portfolio picks have been in the larger uh, banking space. Yes, we do have a couple of names uh, in the smaller banks, both in the private sector and the PSU banks, but those have been very, very uh, selective and uh, depending on the mandates that uh, some of our funds are uh, mandated. So you don't mind missing the bus on... Uh... Uh, the public sector banks and the private sector banks. I mean, it's mind-boggling the kind of uh, gains that they have seen. Uh, Yuko Bank is up 150%. I mean, we are talking about 10 rupee, 12, 12 rupee stocks. Mm. But still, over the year, gain is 152%. Karnataka Bank, 150%. Karur Vaishya, 146%. Uh, uh, I can go on South Indian Bank, 121%. You don't mind missing that bus, Harsha. Yes, I mean, we do have an uh, uh, overweight position on the PSU banks as well. Uh, we may not have all the PSU banks in the portfolio, and that's impossible to have as well. Uh, but yes, uh, we have gained out of the overweight position that we have on the banking sector, and we continue to remain overweight. But selectively, we may look at few stocks, uh, but I don't think we will completely go down the curve and uh, forget about larger banks. Okay. What about consumption, Harsha? Today, there was a startling uh, report uh, uh, saying that urban consumption, uh, especially for discretionaries, which we thought was very strong, is actually slowing. Uh, any thoughts on consumer stocks? Yes, uh, this bit of a negative that's coming out. Uh, while uh, everyone knew that rural growth is uh, quite subdued for quite some time now, uh, urban growth at least was uh, quite strong. But over the last few months, we have seen some uh, uh, worsening of uh, demand trends, even in the urban consumption. We need to wait and see whether that continues or it's just a play. Uh, but overall, we believe that uh, over the next year, the rural growth should start to uh, look better. Uh, usually in a pre-election year, there is going to be quite a bit of spend that goes into the rural areas. And also, uh, after the COVID disruption, I think the rural population is kind of normalizing. And once they have a reasonable amount of savings and confidence about the economy continuing to uh, run at a reasonable speed, uh, then I think uh, you will continue to see uh, consumption trends picking up even from the rural uh, area. 
So while mm. uh, the recent uh, uh, slowdown in the urban consumption may be uh, some bit of a dampener, but over the year 2023, we believe that uh, consumption, especially the rural growth-led uh, consumption, should start to improve. Oh, that'll be good news, Harsha, if that happens, because the rural pocket has been struggling a little bit. But gas prices have been coming down, and I think you all have a view on the city gas distribution companies. I understand as per what reports suggest is uh, Gujarat Gas has gone ahead and cut prices. I think that's more or less on expected lines because gas prices itself have come down. You all are in the bullish camp, right? What's your view from here on? Uh, yes, that's right. I mean, uh, uh, we believe that uh, these are uh, some of the natural monopolies that you have in our country. And clearly, the return ratios are very strong. And uh, as long as uh, uh, price is reasonable, there is enough demand uh, on, on, on the... Uh, uh, there is enough demand. So to that extent, I think uh, uh, these companies will benefit as uh, gas uh, gas prices start to cool off in the global uh, market. And uh, they should benefit from uh, improved demand or sustained demand. And uh, overall, I mean, this is a space that we continue to like. Uh, we may not have the kind of overweight positions that we used to have uh, earlier in the past, but uh, certainly there are uh, stocks in our portfolio uh, which are into city gas distribution. Okay. I have actually uh, two questions for you on two uh, sectors. So let me start one by one. Or I mean, you, you're free to choose which one you want to talk about. Uh, on the insurance space, you know, you've had life insurance companies, HDFC Life, SBI Life come back into action. Any thoughts on that piece and whether, uh, in fact, GIC, I think, is at a fresh 52-week high as well. Um, you like the space? Uh, we do have uh, some uh, exposure in the life insurance space. Uh, continue to bet on the... Uh, underpenetrated Indian market and usually uh, this quarter is a seasonally strong quarter for uh, life insurance companies and we should see that uh, growth picking up as well. But overall within the financial space uh, we like lending businesses more. Uh, as we discussed uh, credit growth is uh, really picking up and will continue to remain uh, quite strong even for uh, 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 next year. So in that context we believe that uh, the leveraged uh, uh, lending businesses will do much better than uh, capital market oriented or non-lending businesses. So uh, that's where within financials our preference is for lending businesses, but we do have uh, okay. some exposure to insurance. Okay, some exposure to insurance. And finally, on the new age tech companies, uh, there's a big raging debate about whether one should buy into the dip or not. Which camp do you belong to? Uh, we have not increased our exposure to some of these companies. Uh, uh, we were lucky not to participate in many of them and also in some cases we were able to book some profits and uh, get out at higher levels. Uh, we are watching the space uh, but we have not really increased our exposure to new age businesses. Okay. <clears throat> Finally, Harsha, what's the uh, Kotak internal view on the market itself? Last year we ended with 4% gains in rupee terms, uh, which was a big outperformance compared to US markets. This year, almost everyone is forecasting a U.S. market uh, decline to continue. Will we do a modest 4% again? Will we do much better? Your call. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, predict uh, short-term market moments, uh, especially given that there are so many global challenges ahead. Uh, but clearly, I think India will continue to outperform uh, many other global markets uh, in our view. And uh, the performance of Indian markets would be dependent on the earnings delivery. As of now, we believe that uh, the commodity cost pressures that we have seen over the last uh, several quarters is going to moderate. We may not see the in entire impact in the December quarter results, but as we go into March and June, we will uh, start to see that benefit coming in. And if uh, demand continues to remain strong, then I think uh, Indian companies should deliver uh, reasonable earnings growth. So maybe we will see better back-ended uh, performance in Indian markets. Uh, there is not much room for uh, uh, <coughs> our markets to outperform, given where our valuations are relative to the global mm. market. Uh, but uh, uh, definitely, uh, there is no uh, a scare as well. I mean, we may be near the new highs uh, at, at this point of time, uh, but uh, uh, people are not leveraged. There is no euphoria. There is no uh, speculation that's happening at the broader end of the market, etc. So overall, I don't think uh, this is a market which is going to uh, come off uh, uh, in a hurry. Uh, it may be consolidating at around current levels and depending on how fundamentals pan out, maybe we'll see the performance uh, towards the end of the year. Okay. Thank you very much, Harsha. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Have a fabulous 2023. Thank you. Thank you, Lata. Okay. Well, the markets are practically on predicted lines with uh, the big indexes moving in a range. 
and uh, the Nifty Bank clearly outperforming. Mid caps today are underperforming. Uh, that perhaps mm -hmm. is just a bit of profit taking. We'll take a break and thereafter, uh, real estate sector, that's uh, the other one that's been doing very well. We will speak with Irfan Razak, the Chairman Managing Director of Prestige Group. Uh, MOSL, that is Motilal, is positive on the company for this year, 2023. Thereafter, we will be speaking with Shailesh Rajbhan and Amit Tripathi of Nippon India Mutual Fund. Uh, we're going to talk about key themes for equities in 2023. Later, we will also connect with uh, Vijay Kumar of NCC, Nagarjuna Construction, to discuss 2023 business outlook.